Today we will talk about how Islamists are the worst thieves in the world. They stole a temple and built a mosque but they forgot to actually convert the temple into a mosque. And now the temple is about to be restored to its former glory. Hi and welcome to TFI English, the national socio-political analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I'm your host Tanya and if you haven't subscribed to the TFI English yet, please hit the subscribe button and also click on the bell icon to receive all the recent updates. Coming back to the story, in this video, I will explain why Gyanwapi thieves are the stupidest morons in the history of mankind. Let's begin. The Gyanwapi fiasco has made one fact crystal clear. Islamists are the worst thieves that one can find in the world. These buffoons superimposed an illegitimate mosque over a grand Hindu temple in Kashi and made no effort to cover up their crime. One may argue that their indifference stemmed from their pride in not being held accountable ever. Yet, now that the reality of the Gyanwapi Masjid is tumbling out of the closet like a huge heap of ruffled clothes, they are crying like dying goats. Currently, Islamists have no defense. All indicators of the masjid being built over a temple are visible to the naked eye and this foolishness and lethargy of Islamists will win the case for Hindus in the courts. Just after Islamic invaders made their way into India, relentless attacks on Kashi Vishwanath had started. First, in the 11th century, Qutbuddin Aibak attacked it following the orders of Muhammad of Ghori. The Kashi Vishwanath Mandir was demolished again during the rule of either Hussain Shah Sharki or Sikandar Lodi. The final assault on the Mandir was executed by the Mughal tyrant Aurangzeb. In 1669 CE, Aurangzeb destroyed the Mandir out of sheer hatred for Hindu culture and built the Gyanwapi Masjid in its place. The remains of the erstwhile Mandir can still be seen in the foundation, the columns and the rear part of the mosque. Interestingly, such was the lethargic snobbery of the Mughal tyrant that he named the erected mosque with a Sanskrit name meaning a well of knowledge. The Mughals were of the belief that within one or two generations, no Hindu or Kafir would remain in India and therefore no expenditure needed to be undertaken to actually convert the temple into a mosque. Hence, the Gyanwapi Masjid has always been a temple. The recent surveys conducted in and around the structure prove this. Two reports of the now-concluded videography survey of the Gyanwapi Masjid have brought to light the fascinating features of the so-called Gyanwapi Masjid. The reports state that debris of the old temple was found at the corner of the northern and western walls outside the barricading of the mosque and Hindu motifs such as bells, kalash, flowers and trishul were visible on pillars in the Tehkhana. According to the report, the shapes of four idols were seen on one shilapat and were sinduri colored. A place to light lamps was found next to the idols on the walls. When the assault on the Gyanwapi Mandir was launched, the superficial features of structures were changed. For example, temple shikhars were clumsily converted into uneven domes. The Hindu features of the temple atop which the mosque was built were never changed. In fact, no attempts were made to even conceal them. The fact that the shivling still remains shows how Islamists for the past three centuries have been squatting with absolute disinterest over an inherently Hindu property. They could have gotten rid of the shivling when they wanted to. They did not. What does that tell you? It tells you that Islamists are morons of the highest order that do not have much foresight. The shivling that they hid to get rid of will now become the single biggest reason for Islamists losing their illegal position of the Gyanwapi complex. Just when Islamists got to know that the authenticity of their masjid was being called into question in Indian courts, they decided to initiate a cover-up. How did they do so? By plastering the walls of the structure with lime. Essentially, Islamists tried concealing historical facts and causing more damage to an ancient monument than they already have that will again result in them losing in the courts. 
Islamists tried stealing a Hindu temple. They failed miserably at the theft. Their theft is now out in the open. Even a layman who is exposed to the inner details of the complex will be able to say that the structures are all Hindu in nature. Islamists, therefore, have really shot themselves in the foot right now. Not removing all the Hindu specks of the complex will cost them dearly and result in them facing global humiliation once again as the once destroyed temple soon gets restored to its full glory.